What would happen if Yellowstone supervolcano had a super eruption as it had in the past? Well, USGS reveals what would happen. Tom Fish Express UK, Yellowstone National Park houses the uh, huge supervolcano of Yellowstone. The USGS US Geological Survey revealed exactly what would happen if Yellowstone's volcano erupted again with a super eruption. Should a supervolcano lurking beneath Yellowstone National Park ever erupt, it could spell calamity for much of the United States and for much of the world. Deadly ash would spew for thousands of miles across the country. It would destroy buildings. It would kill crops, animals, livestock, affect key infrastructure. Now, fortunately, the chances of this occurring today is very low from what the geologists say. Yellowstone houses a supervolcano, and it makes thousands of times more powerful than it means it's a thousand times more powerful than a normal-sized volcano. The uh, supervolcano has had three enormous eruptions in its long history, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 664,000 years ago. Others say 640,000 or 630,000, just about there. These were the three latest super eruptions. It had a major eruption 70,000 years ago, and it's had... 80 eruptions since then. Uh, one of them happened to be a hydrothermal eruption which caused Mary Lake. That was about 5,300 years ago. Now there's a little uh, indication that another super eruption is due any time. It's even possible Yellowstone might never erupt on a similar scale, that is having a super eruption. USGS researchers calculate how much an enormous eruption would affect nearby regions in the short term, that is, years to decades. In their statement, USGS said, parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming are the closest to Yellowstone. They would be affected by pyroclastic flows. Other places in the United States would be impacted by falling ash. These uh, some types of eruptions usually form calderas, which are broad volcanic depressions created in the ground surface collapse as it collapses as a result of withdrawal of the partially molten rock, the magma below. Fortunately, the chances of this type of an eruption at Yellowstone are exceedingly small, they said, in the next few thousand years. Now, what is Yellowstone supervolcano? It sits on top of a reservoir of hot magma five miles deep. Now, the thing is that they found that the uh, magma chamber is about three miles below the surface. And underneath the magma chamber, there is a magma reservoir. And it's believed to be, from what they've examined and found, one of the largest in the world, one of the largest magma reservoirs of the supervolcano. There are about 20 supervolcanoes worldwide, and some of them have not even been counted in that number. Uh, for example, the Germany supervolcano. Now, the Yellowstone is fed by a huge plume of molten rock welling up from hundreds of miles below, and the heat fuels Yellowstone's geysers and hot springs, and as magma rises up into these chambers and it cools, the ground above Yellowstone rises and falls. We know that uh, Yellowstone is uh, subsiding or rising and is somehow heaving or breathing from what the geologists say. On rare occasions throughout history, the supervolcano's magma chamber has erupted. The overwhelming majority of those eruptions in Yellowstone have been smaller lava flows, with the last occurring at Pitchstone Plateau about 70,000 years ago. The reason why Yellowstone received so much media attention is because of the slim possibility of a super eruption. And such a super eruption is anything that measures magnitude 8 or more on the volcano explosivity index, in which at least 240 cubic miles or 1,000 cubic kilometers of material gets ejected. And that's enough to bury the state of Texas 
with five feet deep ash. So you can imagine. Now, when geologist Jake Lowenstern was asked to give his estimate of chances of Yellowstone erupting, he said that uh, the uh, based on geological records, there is a one in 10,000 chance we could be hit by a global level threat before 2100. But he added that, given the erratic nature of volcanoes, that number does not mean anything, not much anyway. And he said back in 2017, it's not possible to rule out, but it's a remote possibility. Each of the three past super eruptions, hotspots pewed uh, more than 2, uh, 250 cubic miles of magma into the air. Lawrence Stern previously warned that would be enough to cover most the, uh, of the entire North America in an ash blanket. He said back in 2012 the ash is thick near the eruption source of course and a small fraction of the millimeter once you move 2,000 miles away. He says it's fair to say that a trace of ash would be found over most of the United States though it would only be thick enough to collapse roofs in the states closest to Yellowstone. Now, uh, the event of this, uh, an event of this nature has been enough to worry many Americans, with some claiming another one could be overdue, but researchers working for the USGS stated that this theory could not be farther from the truth. Their websites read, first of all, one cannot present recurrent intervals based on only two values. It would be statistically meaningless, but for those who insist, he said, let's do the arithmetic, the three eruptions occurred 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and 0.64 million years ago. The two intervals are thus 0.8 and 0.66 million years, averaged to a 73, 0.73 million year interval. And again, the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, implying that we are still about 90,000 years away from the time when we might consider calling Yellowstone overdue for another caldera forming eruption. But we can't discount the possibility of another such eruption occurring sometime in the future, given Yellowstone's volcanic history and the continued presence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera. Yes, there's continued presence of magma. The potential for another eruption is something that's being monitored closely by NASA. Images taken by the Advanced Spaceborne Thermal Emission and Reflection Radiometer, ASTER for short, help scientists to identify the hot spots in rising magma and uh, to warn of any future, future further events. Greg Vaughn from USGS revealed back in 2012, this is technology and data that could be applied to any geothermal and volcanic areas around the world to monitor eruptions and maybe even predict volcanic activity. Most volcanoes are not monitored until they erupt and I want to get ahead of that, he said. And taking data manually is a difficult thing to do because Yellowstone is such a huge area. It's hard work and it's time consuming and there are bears. Bears, yes, animals, and it's dangerous. Now researchers use thermal imaging from space to monitor about 10,000 geothermal features of the Yellowstone region. And we recently found that they did find a new uh, geothermal area northwest of the lake, of Yellowstone Lake. And um, they found that that was very hot, and the trees that had fallen there were burnt charcoal on the area that was resting on the ground, whereas the area that was exposed to the air was uh, of the tree trunk was normal looking, Where, whereas the one that was touching the ground had turned to charcoal. That was how hot the ground is. Um, and of course, that means that there's some kind of uh, magma activity under there. We know that it's a, it's a normal activity, though. It's nothing out of the ordinary from what they uh, report. Now, we have had a, a tremendous amount of uh, steamboat geyser eruptions this year. And according to USGS, the uh, current alert dated January 1st, and I'm talking about the seismicity and ground deformation during 2019 December, University of Utah Seismograph Stations, responsible for the operation and analysis of Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 87 earthquakes in the Yellowstone Park region, 
The largest event was a minor earthquake of magnitude 3.5, 10 miles south of West Yellowstone, Montana, December 15. The event was reportedly felt in Island Park, Idaho, and surrounding areas. No swarm activity was observed in December. Yellowstone earthquake activity remains in background levels. Ground deformation in Yellowstone area has been variable, but minor over the last few months. Overall, subsidence of Yellowstone caldera is indicated by GPS stations on both the Sour Creek and Mallard Lake resurgent domes, with about 2 centimeters of subsidence during 2019. In the area of Norris Geyser Basin, that's where we have Steamboat Geyser, GPS data showed subsidence of about 2.5 centimeters, that's 1 inch, since September. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory provides long-term monitoring of volcano and earthquake activity in the park. And it's the largest and most diverse collection of natural thermal features in the world. It contains over 60% of the world's geysers. It's the first national park, and it's uh, YVO is one of the five U.S. Geological Survey Volcano Observatories that monitor volcanoes in the U.S. for science and public safety. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.